Hello, Assalamualaikum and good morning to all. My name is Dr. Yang Rafida Hassan. Can call me Dr. Yang. I'm a visiting lecturer in orthodontics. Today will be my very first lecture in ortho, which is orthopedic appliances. If you have any question regarding this topic, you all can email me at this email, rafida at pidc.edu.my. These are the three main orthopedic appliances that I will be covering in my lecture. The first one is headgear. The second one is reverse pull headgear and also known as face mask. And the third one is chin cup. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to outline the indication, contraindication and the uses of headgear, reverse pull headgear and chin cup. Okay, part 2 will be face mask and chin cup. So, what is face mask? Face mask is also known as reverse pull headgear. Actually, both are the same. Growth modification for class 3 problem is the reverse of class 2. Treatment involves restriction of mandibular growth along with downward and forward maxillary growth. So, mainly headgear is for the treatment of class 2. And... Face mask or reverse pull headgear is the treatment for class 3 skeletal problem. So headgear implies a distal force to the maxilla and the resultant compression of the maxillary sutures can inhibit forward maxillary growth. Likewise, pulling the maxilla forward and separating the suture should stimulate the forward growth of the maxilla, hence promote the correction of the class 3 problems. Headgear which cause a forward pull of the maxilla are therefore called reverse pull headgear. Face mask popularized by Delay in 1970s in one of the most common reverse pull headgear in use today. A face mask works on the principle of pulling the maxillary sutures forward with the help of anchorage from the chin or forehead or usually both. A forward maxillary pull is applied with the help of heavy elastic that are attached to hook on the rigid framework. What are the indications for reverse pull headgear? Mild to moderate class 3 skeletal malocclusion due to maxillary retrusion. Reverse, reverse pull headgear works best in young growing children around 8 years old. Ideal patient for face mask should have normal or retrusive but not protrusive maxillary teeth as face mask cause forward movement of the maxillary teeth related to the maxilla. So if the upper front teeth is upright or slightly retrusive, that's, that's the best case for face mask. Correction of post-surgical relapse after osteotomies and selective rearrangement of palatal shaft in cleft patient. This photo shows parts of parts of a face mask. First is a forehead cap, then the metal framework and the chin cup or a chin pad. These are the heavy elastic that connects the face mask to the teeth. The reverse pull head gear is made of a rigid extraoral framework connecting two pads that contact the soft tissue in the forehead and chin region. The pads are usually adjustable through the use of screw. Two sides of anchorage have the advantage that anchorage is spread over a large area, thus reducing the amount of force exerted. The elastic are attached to an adjustable anterior wire with hooks which are connected to the framework. The maxillary appliance should have hooks in the canine primarily molar, molar region above the occlusal level for attachment of elastics. This places the force vector closer to the center of resistance of the maxilla and helps in pure forward translation. To reduce the amount of dental movement, it is better to splint the maxillary dentition. To achieve this, an acrylic splint is usually cemented onto the maxillary teeth. Biomechanical consideration. 
The maxilla can be advanced 2 to 4 mm forward over a period of 8 to 10 months. The appliance is preferably used for no more than 8 months as there is a risk of gingival inflammation and densification of the teeth that are covered by the spleen. The amount of maxillary movement is influenced by a number of factors like amount of force, Successful maxillary protraction can be brought about by 300 to 500 grams of force per side in the primary or mid dentition. Direction of force A 15 to 20 degree downward pull to the occlusal plane is required to produce forward maxillary movement. In most cases of maxillary deficiency, maxilla is deficient in the vertical plane as well. Therefore, a slight downward direction of force is usually des desirable. The line of force passes below the center of resistance of maxilla, producing a counterclockwise rotation of the maxilla and dentition. This results in a possible extrusion of maxillary posterior teeth, leading to a downward and backward rotation of the mandible. But, if the clinical situation warrants a pure translatory movement of the maxilla, then the position of the anterior wire to which the elastic attach can be made to be more superior. For example, the extent of the maxillary rotation can be controlled according to the point of attachment of the elastic. Alternatively, a modified protection headgear as shown below can be used to get pure translation. Duration of force to vary between 3 to 16 months. On average, at least 8 to 12 months of wear is required to produce a desired effect. At least, patient can use up to 12 to 14 hours per day. Optimal results are seen when face mask is used in a primary or early mid-dentition period. An optimal time to intervene an early class 3 malocclusion is at the time of eruption of the permanent maxillary central incisors. So it's around 7 to 8 years old. While a class 2 correction can be slightly delayed up to even the pubertal growth spurt, class 3 malocclusion have to be corrected as soon as it is noticed. This is because the maxillary is locked in by the mandible and the class 3 will worsen if not corrected. This is when the intersective treatment is very important. Type of face mask or reverse pull headgear First one, the most famous one is delay face mask. The left face mask is made out of a rigid square-shaped metal framework which connects a chin up to the forehead pad and has a wire for elastic attachment. The second type is tubinger model face mask. It's a modified version of face mask in which the forehead cap and the chin cup are connected with the help of two middle metal rods. An adjustable crossbar is attached in front of the mouth to engage elastic. The third one is the petite type of face mask. Petite modified the left face mask by increasing the amount of force generated by the appliance, thus decreasing the overall treatment time. Appliance is made up of the single midline rod connecting to the forehead and chin. In this appliance, the forehead cap, chin cap and crossbar can be adjusted according to the patient needs. This video shows the summary of the mode of action of the reverse pull head here. We can see that patient initially presented with the restrained growth of the maxilla and we put the intraoral uh, appliance and then we put the face mask. Elastic is attached to the intraoral appliance so that we can have the muscle, sorry, we can have the force to move the maxilla forward. Then finally, we'll get the positive of the jet back. Chin cup. It is an extraoral orthopedic device which is useful in the treatment of class 3 malocclusion that occurs due to a protrusive mandible but a relatively normal maxilla. Chin cup therapy attempts to retard 
or redirect the growth of the mandible in order to obtain a better anterior-posterior relation between the two jaws. Philosophy of the chin cup therapy Mandible grows by a position of the bone at the condyle and along its free posterior border. So, once we put the chin cup at the chin, we will restrict the growth at the condyle. So, that is the philosophy of the chin cup therapy. Basic chin cup appliance design. The chin cup is an extraoral appliance that utilizes a head cap which is firmly fitted and seated at the posterior superior aspect of the cranium as anchorage and has attachment for the placement and activation of the chin cup. It consists of the flowing, the force module, which is the elastic or metal spring that provide the desired tension level on the chin cup and the chin cup, custom made or preformed, hard or soft. A chin cup can be custom made from plastic using a chin impression. A commercial metal or plastic cup can be used if it fits well enough. So this picture show the components of chin cup. We have the anchorage for the head cap, the force module and the chin cup. The line of direction of force. There are two ways to use the chin cup. First, the line of force acting directly through the condyle or the line of force acting below the condyle. Line of force acting directly through the condyle with the intent of impeding mandibular growth in the same way that extraoral force against the maxilla impedes its growth. So the principle is the same. If the line of force acting below the condyle, the chin is rotated downward and backward. Less force is required and it will result in increase in fascia height and a decrease in the prominence of the chin. Magnitude of force. Most authors recommend a force 300 to 600 gram per side. Initially, a lower force level, about 150 grams, may be advised for the patient to get used to the appliance. One compliance of the patient is improved, then we can improve, we can increase the force bit by bit. Duration of wear. A maximum of 12 to 14 hours per day of chin cup wear is recommended. The effect of chin cup. Redirection of mandibular growth in a downward and backward direction. Improvement in skeletal and soft tissue profile. Therefore, chin cup works well in patients with reduced or normal lower anterior face height but is contradict in long face patient. Lingual tipping of lower incisors. Recent systematic reviews, however, have shown that chin cup does not stop mandibular growth. It only redirects the growth. If there is a strong genetic etiology behind the mandibular prognathism, the correction can relapse. So, if patient have a genetics of class 3 skeletal in the family, so the treatment of chin cup is not really successful. So, as a recap, so by the end of this lecture, can you able to outline the indication and contraindication? And the users of headgear, chin cup and reverse pull headgear. Okay. Alright, so these are my references. Basically, this lecture is based on Dr. Vivek Bajka PowerPoint slide. And I add a little bit of facts from two of my main references. is orthodontic at a glance and contemporary orthodontics by William Prophet. You can have a look on this book or by other recommended textbook. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for your attention. If you have any doubts or questions regarding this topic, you can email me at rafida at pidc.edu.my or you can approach me every Friday. Uh, that's the time where I'll be available in PIDC. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this topic very much. And have a nice day. Bye.